welcome to OK at Home DIY. And today I am joining in uh, Trash to Treasure. The term is actually Trash to Create Treasure. And Casey over at Coffee with My Sunshine is hosting this challenge and for this month. And so I'm going to link her channel in my description box below and then hopefully link the playlist too. Uh, my technology skills are being tested. So I hope it is down there in that description box. But please watch my video and then after my video is done, pop on over to her channel and give her video a watch or watch any of her amazing videos because she's so crafty and creative and she's one of the reasons why I started my own YouTube channel. So with that being said, let's get into the crafts that I turned in to treasure. Okay, the first of the crafts are going to be this clock. I took the face off of it. You can see where the battery went in. And I'm just taking the sticky stuff off the side. It was part of a much larger um, cra uh, clock. And it had this double-sided sticky tape on the side. So I'm just prepping this clock base to be painted. To me, it reminded me of a round tray. And I was just excited about um, being able to transport Form this because it is trash. I hate broken clocks. So what I did is I took these stickers, uh, puffed round stickers that you get in the office section, and I placed them evenly around the clock before I went out and spray painted it with this. I'll link it in, I will not link it, but I will put it in the description what the color was of this paint. And it's like a hammered pewter or a hammered gray metal paint, and I just spray painted the outside and the handles were actually handles from a tote bag that I spray painted as well. I just took some cardboard and I traced the circle out and here I am just trying to fit it inside the circle of the tray taking one of those pink, um, it actually has a pointing end on it at the Dollar Tree and taking it and just, um, you know, trying to create a crease so I can uh, cut the circle smaller and once you get that circle to fit inside the tray you're going to pop it out and you're going to um, trace it onto some contact paper so here I am I'm just still trying to make it fit into the tray and I got it the way I wanted it so I'm going to go ahead and take some contact paper from the Dollar Tree that looks like wood and I'm going to trace the circle around and then I'm going to cut it out. Okay, once it's all cut out, I just peeled off the backing and stuck it onto that round piece of cardboard. Now I made two of these round pieces to go in to give the base of the tray a little sturdy, more sturdiness. And so here's the other one that I created. I made the circle a little bit larger so it could lap over. So that's gonna be my top circle. And I'm simply just gonna put them together and place them inside my tray. And it, makes it a metal and a wood look. Now I wanted the grain of the paper to go the other way so the grain would point in between the handles and that's it. That's how I transformed this clock into a round metal tray and this is what it looks like completed. The third, uh, second craft, sorry, that we're going to go into is make these Nora vases, they're corrugated metal uh, vases that you find at flower shops, but I don't, haven't seen any. So I'm gonna take this corrugated paper, you can't tell at all, but it is corrugated. You can get that from packaging, but this is actually something that I had in my stash for a while. Some styrofoam, and this is metal silver paint from Waverly. And this is the metal silver, sterling silver from Folk Art. Now I'm choosing to use folk art today and I'm gonna give this paper one coat of that paint. This is a mushroom can that I'm choosing to use today, but you can use any can you want. 
And this is a water chestnut can. It has the same height and dimensions as a Dole pineapple can that I used to make this Nora vase. I didn't want just the same height as the can, so I created more height with just the paper and um, took out the ring. It's, when you have the pull tabs, there's a ring left, you wanna take and take out that ring so there isn't any sharp metal there. So I'm going to take the silver paint in folk art, folk art silver paint in sterling silver here. And I'm just gonna give my paper one coat of this paint because it's white paper. The paint covers pretty well and you don't need to do two. And now if your corrugated paper is brown or green or red or whatever you have, um, then you might have to do one or two coats. But you want to make them, make them thin coats or else the paper can get bubbly and the corrugated nest of the paper will puff up into a bubble and, and it won't look like the corrugated metal that we're going for. Once that is all painted all the way through, I'm going to go ahead and take my blow dryer and hasten the drying process so we can get along on with the craft faster. Here I'm taking the can and I'm measuring the top, how long the can is on the paper. And I'm going from the top of the bottom rim to the top of the can to give myself um, a good starting point. I go ahead and just draw a line to connect this so I can see what I have and then I decided that I don't want to stop at the top of the can. I want the um, top of this to go a little bit further. But first I needed to go back in and take out, there's just a thin piece of metal left on the top of the can that can cut you. Uh, so I, I took my can opener and just went around and I was able to remove that so it wouldn't be so sharp and cut. So then I'm going to go ahead and take my ruler. I'm going to connect those lines and I measure up three inches on one side and that's not quite there between those two lines and my first line is three inches. So I went ahead and I connected those and that's, the, that's how tall I'm going to have my paper to cover the mushroom can. So I got the line the way I wanted it and I'm just going to go ahead and cut straight across and cut that out. I'm going to go ahead and use that bottom part of the paper that I cut and I'm going to glue that to the bottom of the can so the top of it is going to be that straight edge. And I lost the footage of gluing it but I just went ahead and hot glued it all the way around little by little and this is me just finishing it up the ends. And there's just a bit of unevenness on top, so I'm going to go ahead and even that up. And then I'm going to go ahead after that to take the silver paint, the sterling silver paint in folk art, and paint the inside lip there that's white. That's the back side of the paper that I didn't get before. But I think this is a perfect time to do it because then it will dry easy and you'll be, it'll be quick. So here I am taking the larger Nora vase that I made with a dull can and filling it up with styrofoam. I'm taking another piece of styrofoam that I cut round to fit inside of it. And then I'm just putting in the lavender piece, uh, flowers here that, uh, that I have around. I did get these at Walmart, so whenever we're out, be able to get out and about, you'll probably be able to find these at Walmart. And then I'm taking these rocks that I got at Dollar Tree and filling in around the lavender. It's going to disguise the styrofoam and just kind of give it a natural look. And here's how I styled all three Nora vases together. Third and fourth final trash to treasure for this video are these crib ends. I found a crib on bulk trash day so I went ahead 